Hi, my name is Katie Sweetman. I'm an astrologer and psychic medium here in Brooklyn, New York, um, and I work under the name Empowering Astrology. And this is going to be the first in a series of videos about you know why do we need astrology more than ever? And I'm going to be talking with different astrologers who have different perspectives, but we, I think we all have this spiritual take on astrology. And I was really excited about having Christina as my first guest in this series. So we're going to have a discussion about, you know, why do we need astrology more than ever, but also get to know Christina. Um, so welcome, Christina. I'm kind of turning this into a little bit of like a chat show format. I love it. I've always wanted to be a guest on chat show. <laughs> yeah, I guess, this, I guess this is my chat show. You know, we uh, met um, very quickly. I think it was just last month when you approached me about doing the Awakening Summit. And I think that what you created or, you know, kind of spearheaded for us was so beautiful because we just did it so quickly. It was a, why don't you kind of talk a little bit about the Awakening Summit and uh, what we created? Because I think this is, you know, kind of turn a little bit of focus on what we did back in March. What was April. Great. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, it was in April, I think it was over the Easter and Passover weekend. And um, well, first of all, thank you so much, Katie, for inviting me and for having this conversation. And it was kind of fun how, um, you know, I had followed you online and I, you know, oh. I knew we had some connections, some mutual friends. Um, but then when the whole thing was, you know, just so hot, the whole, um, we knew that we were really beginning to get that wave of the coronavirus. And there was just no denying it here in the United States. I mean, I've been watching it approach in Europe and I know you yeah. were there too and yeah. Spain barely got out. Barely got out. And, and we knew that this wave was now coming to America. And then I also saw, well, we have the sacred weekend coming. No one can go to their usual, you know, celebrations, religious, um, you know, meetings and celebrations for Passover and for Easter. And so everyone's going to be at home. And how could they then also get some nourishment? Because also a lot of people that are probably already in our circles are, um, have maybe turned away from traditional religion, but yet there is something in the psyche and in the soul that really craves that connection to something greater. And, you know, not that astrology is a religion, but it does answer and it does fulfill some of these needs of the soul at that level. At least that's what I feel. And that's how I've aligned with it. Um, and so I reached out to a couple of the gals that I knew well, and I loved and worked with before Tara all and mm -hmm. Shireen Vizmaya. And, and I asked them like, who do you know? There are women astrologers that work with astrology from a soul point of view. And Shireen said, you have to reach out to Katie Sweetman. Um, and so, and I knew you as this very sophisticated New York astrologer. So I thought, really, Katie Sweetman? And then, you know, I'm so glad I got to know you at like this deeper level and that you are connected to astrology as um, an awakening tool, you know, something that can help provide that guidance for us. And so the Astrology for Awakening Summit was then just kind of born organically from that. And I just am so honored that all of the women that I asked said, I'd love to, you know, <laughs> like not to make, you know, they, they saw, I already had like the design, I already had the title, that's all I had and the date. And um, so the fact that it was such like a big yes for so many of you, um, that led to the event being so um, just connected and it felt like such a warm hug from everyone. That's like a lot of what people said. Um, and it helped that the sun was exalted in Aries and trying Leah, then Leah yeah. moon, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that was, you know, the, the cosmos was behind us. The stars were aligned. So it was wonderful. Yeah, we had a really uh, like great diverse group of women and it was so, you know, I just I think sometimes the voices of women are even, um, we don't always have them in the astrology community. So we, you know, we all got together, it was very quick. Um, you know, I know that some people were just like, wait, I didn't know about this, but it just kind of almost needed to like be birthed 
and to the world. Um, but yeah, that's the Awakening Summit. And, and I think this is a good segue into asking people how they can find you and, and you know, who are you? How, you know, what kind of a, you know, I know you're Radiant Astrology, Radiant uh, Awakening, wait, what am I doing? Radiant wrong? Astrology. Yeah. Radiant Astrology. <laughs> Radiantastrology.com. But, you know, you have this vision to host this hum- summit. So where are you coming from with your astrology background? Um, thanks for asking that. Um, I think it's always just a journey for me, just feeling if I'm continually aligned with it. Um, as far as how I, you know, I feel like I've always been into astrology. And um, like when I was a kid, my mom had all those fashion magazines that in the back of them would have the astrology, the horoscopes, you know, I'm like on the last page. And then um, when I got older, I remember, excuse me. <coughs> when I got older, there seemed to be a time, I don't know if it's in the nineties where little by little, all of the magazines would stop carrying the horoscope. The columns, yeah. I, was like, oh my God. I guess like, I, I have to look what was in the collective. What was Saturn doing? <laughs> the, like the horoscope. Well, I done? specifically got a, um, a subscription to Vanity Fair because of Michael Luton's horoscopes in the back of Vanity Fair or, or the other front. I think at one point they moved the back, but I remember it was around 2004. I was like, I, I opened up to like the normal spot and there was no astrology column. So yeah, there was like a moment where you, I mean, I think Susan Miller is still in vogue, but where these kind of names and faces that had always been in publications they they weren't there anymore maybe it's the internet maybe that's the, the what was saturn doing or what was the, mm. the collective doing at that time i have to really look because i just remember one by one they were like disappearing and there was a time where there was from you know my point of view i didn't see any of them and then but what that did was that led me to start being like okay i need to look deeper i need to you know get my own books on astrology and go to the you know the psychic store and like <laughs> just see whatever astrologer was like on call that day i mean i had some really weird experiences there but it slowly led me to understanding astrology even just beyond horoscopes but i was very happy when astrology columns started reappearing again in those magazines and um, come full circle since like in the last 15 years yeah a Jupiter cycle or so. <laughs> one and a half <laughs> Jupiter cycles. And um, so then, you know, when I then became more an adult after college, um, I think there was a part of me being like, I'm like a Capricorn stellium and a Scorpio stellium. So the, like my Scorpio side just loved it, was obsessed with it. But then my Capricorn side said, no, this is just a waste of time. I need to do something practical. So I studied international business and French and school. Very, very Capricorn. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, I went on my whole career path and everything. And then when I, you know, got older, um, I started just seeing astrologers. At one point I had an astrologer that I would consult like regularly and for a number of years. So I was a client. So I came from the client side and I knew that way I kind of learned what I liked about astrology, you know, about a consulting astrologer and what I didn't. Um, and then at one point I became a life coach for, you know, a short period of time. And from being a life coach, it was just so broad and I didn't really get, Um, anything to really hone in on with my clients, like how I can really help them like really reach their destiny, something, you know, bigger than what they are, are actually carrying a vision of themselves. And I had always loved astrology. And I thought, well, let me kind of like blend this together. Now, the astrologer that I saw, he was not at all about like destiny or anything like that. He would just tell me what he saw was going to happen, you know, very kind of predictive, very kind of doom and gloom. And I would always tell myself, oh, I need to stop seeing him. <laughs> but, um, but I was just too fascinated with it. Eventually, you know, I moved away from his work. I found, you know, my own mentors. And it just was kind of natural because I think that life coaching if it's done really well it can be very powerful yeah but blending that with astrology i've also been through therapy and i actually have a lot of therapists as clients which i imagine you probably do too because a lot of them are opening up you know especially like people that are following like jungian analysts 
you know, like Shireen, yeah. um, you know, that I mean, understand the value of the, the soul level healing has to be accessed through something mystical, you know, because the soul speaks through myth and metaphor and vision yeah. and our inner vision. And astrology is one way of accessing that. Um, so it was just kind of an organic thing that, that happened and grew. And, um, you know, I deal with a lot of clients that sometimes have all of these varied interests, but they think they're just spreading themselves too thin. They don't see the connection with it. And I just am there to guide them that, you know, it is connected and it will eventually find its way to something meaningful if you just stop doubting yourself and you keep on the path. You keep on the path of Let the process happen because mm -hmm. at least that's how it happened for me if i would have doubted like the astrology or the life coaching or the therapy or the whatever um and thinking i had to define myself in one strict way i wouldn't be where i am um the fact that i i just kind of played with everything together because i knew they were helpful and they would somehow create a language um then that eventually emerged in that way so do you do um evolutionary astrology Yes, I'm an evolutionary astrologer, um, and evolutionary astrologer actually, astrology is actually evolving, or should, <laughs> needs to, um, and, you know, evolutionary astrology at its core is the astrology from a soul perspective, you know, that, like, seeing the soul as a continuum, lifetime through lifetime, and then into the future. You don't necessarily have to believe in past lives or future lives to follow evolutionary astrology. Um, but, you know, we all know that we didn't come into this life as a blank slate. You know, there's right. something that, that carries beyond the, this life, right? And so evolutionary astrology can help us have that greater perspective. I'm not an evolutionary astrologer per se, but when I first got, well, you know, I was always into astrology as, as a teenager and, in, and a young woman in my 20s. But when I had my Saturn return and the old way of kind of explaining what that process was, like it just wasn't gelling for me. And I read, you know, Liz Green, um, a Saturn, New Look at an Old Devil. And then I discovered the books of Stephen Forrest. And I was just like, oh, astrology is something therapeutic it's something that describes an ongoing process and transformation which me as a scorpio totally resonated with but i think up until that point astrology was like this predictive party trick like let me tell you who you are as a leo or as an aries and but this idea that we are all working through something and that there's times where with well, the Saturn return when you're age 29 for those who don't know what the Saturn return is um, when you are called to step up more greatly in your path that reframed everything that I was going through and it and this is where I you know maybe to the question that I posed um, at the beginning, you know, why do we need astrology more than ever? I think that what's happening right now, there's so many questions and we're all kind of searching for meaning and a way to reframe this time. And I think astrology can give a very powerful language. I think even though we call ourselves something different, like you as an evolutionary astrologer, I, you know, I try on different terms. I think the holistic astrology is the term that I'm using um, more uh, today. But this idea that there's something we came here to do. There's a, all these disparate things that you were talking about. Like, and this is why I think it's so important to work with an astrologer. These are things that you generally can't find on your own, even though I am very much, you know, how do you find the answers within as opposed to always seeking them from other people. But I think astrologers can really synthesize all the different parts and make it into this kind of big story that then reframes your life. You know, I love what you said about, you know, how can you find the answers within? Because I think that, a, you know, some kind of counseling uh, oriented astrologer, like what we do, 
helps people to actually, you know, there's the chart and then there is your life and there's your inner experience and the chart and the transits simply reflect that. They're a reflection of the, these possibilities, but ultimately the real work is going within because, you know, you can have people, two people with the same chart yeah. have a different level of consciousness. I mean, they say, you know, Hitler and Charlie Chaplin had pretty much the same chart, you know? It was like the same day or very close to the same day. Yeah, they had very distant, different destinies and very different levels of consciousness, right? So we each, you know, as astrologers, we can be the ones to help people to make that connection. I often am there to help people to then turn to themselves, you know, and ask themselves those big questions because I feel like we go through life so much with there's so many things that we want to accomplish and to do on any day, given day. Um, but when you are in that sacred space with an astrologer, um, you have the potential to really actually take the time to focus on what are the bigger things that you don't want to yeah. miss out on because you're so busy, like living life. Right. And astrology can be a, you know, guidance with that, but the right astrologer and client and insight, you know, it's like that sort of that three tiered um, sort of alchemy of the astrologer and the person. And then the question, you know, what is it that they're actually looking for? What are they seeking? And the first thing is to just ask the person, you know, what did they come here for? And sometimes they don't even really know. And to get really clear on that really helps them to get clear on where to focus because you know, there's a lot of people, some people will come to me and say like, they haven't had a reading in 10 years. And I'm like, okay, you know, like I can't solve your entire destiny, future and past lives in one hour, you know, like, all order. and I kind of try to tell people like, sorry, I don't want to disappoint, but, but this is an ongoing journey and you are the hero of this story, you know, and how can I help you in this, in this point in your life? And, um, so now when the whole nature of reality is dying to us, you know, what we knew to be true, Two even as ago. astrologers, right? So many of us, we knew, okay, 2020 was the big, uh, hmm. um, what's Saturn Pluto conjunction going to do? Right. And we knew it was going to be big. We knew it was going to be intense, but now it's like, wow, you know, the astrology didn't disappoint. I think even, <laughs> I remember even thinking like, you know, even though I'm a believer, there is no disbelieving now, <laughs> right? Yeah. The astrology really showed up and showed us like, you know, what it's got, you know, it's like, oh, you thought, you know, 2019 was something, hold my beer, you know, <laughs> whatever. Every year, and I, and I hate, ugh, I don't know, like, like I, every year I get asked, like, when is it going to get better? And, and I've been saying this for years and I kind of hate to have to be the one to say this, but I'm just like, every year and like it's like gonna be more of this gonna be more it's just gonna turn up the intensity i said that in 2009 i said that in 2014 i said that in 2019 even going into this year you know you and i both know and, and maybe just to give some context for the people that are listening if they don't know there was a rare alignment in january of the planet saturn and pluto it only happens every about 40 years so the last time it happened was october of 1982 um, and it's, it's like these two Titanic forces, but it was happening in the sign of Capricorn. The Capricorn is structure, government, um, power, you know, banking to some degree. And the, the term I was using going into the new year to kind of describe it and to give people a visual is the wrecking ball. And I know there were people who probably thought I was like over, you know, since I sensationalized and I was like, look, like, I'm just trying to do this, do justice. Like, how do you work? And, and for me, I, I don't want to be a, uh, what's called a mundane astrologer. So somebody looks at like the political side of things and like, what's going to happen to us as a collective. Not that that's not valid, valuable, but you know, you and I both from the, you know, how we work with people and how we see astrology, see, see how important it is to use it as a transformation tool. So I was saying to people, like, well, how do you, what do you want to like tear down in 2020? Because that's like number one agenda item. Like well, none of us can get away with that. So we had the conjunction back in January and it happened. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Like 
I was expecting a little bit more. You you had some um, big Titanic shifts in the on the political level of uh, the English monarchy, if that's something that's relevant to you or not. But and then I was like, but you know, Mars Mars is going to get into Capricorn in the second half of February, and then in March it's going to start to hit those degrees. And I, no, I don't know. And then yeah, the to use your, your 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 term like the astrology did not disappoint. And we saw that wrecking ball come. And I, I, I know that, you know, not to kind of make light of what's happening in the world and then the true suffering, but I think that there's a subtext to this time is like, there's something powerful emerging. Like that's, I don't think it's just like a, an ideology or a hope. I think it's real. I, I'm having really powerful soul-centered conversations with people because now they're like, oh my, I need to sit down with somebody and help figure out what the next steps are because the lives we have in February, the sometimes even literally the jobs that we had, they don't exist anymore. How is this showing up in your own work, Christina? Gosh, you know, it comes back to that whole thing about needing astrology during these times. I mean, if I didn't have astrology um, right now, gosh, I, I, I don't know that I would have anything to really give me the context, you know, um, because it can help us to see, how we got here, what is happening, and what might be, you know, the nature of the unfolding in the future, right? Because if anything, like Liz Green says, it's about the quality of time. You know, I'm not a mundane astrologer either. Um, although now we can sometimes it's like, whoa, I never thought I knew anything about politics, but now the astrologer is like speaking yeah. to me about it. <laughs> um, but it also, it, it essentially, because even though we might not have seen um, this becoming, you know, the virus taking us here, we still knew what we were facing, right. you know, maybe not how, but we knew the nature sure, of it, you know, Saturn and Aquarius that, that our freedoms being limited, something that we want to take a lot more seriously. And so moving into the future, we know that, you know, now we're going to have this whole summer of retrogrades and we may for a while feel like things might somewhat come, you know, go back to normal. We might be clinging to the past in some ways, but we know where we're going. Eventually we're going to be going back into this future where so much is different, where we have to elevate and up level our lives in new ways. And a lot of that has to do with the technology and, you know, and the technologies we're dealing with aren't just these, you know, scientific technologies or emerging technologies or the internet that's part of it, but also our technologies such as, you know, meditation, that's like a technology of our own, you know, human potential and helping to access that. You know, we, we've been hearing forever probably in the 80s, you know, like my mom, you know, had all those books in the 80s about like, ooh, awakening, where it was like um, tapping into, you know, your third eye and that our our brains only use about what 10 percent we only use three uh, percent or our something brains. Uh... it feels to me like you know as we go into more of this aquarian age like we need to start accessing more of our mind more of all of the potential that we have let go dormant um, and in some ways it's actually really exciting because the old way that we've been clinging to is essentially dying you know it's dead and um, one thing that Virginia Rosenberg had said at one point had said that, you know, we can tear down these structures that are, that are so, you know, trying to have control that are no longer valid, or we can also just turn our backs to them. You know, some of us are so tired and exhausted from the struggle, but you know what, there's power in turning away from them. And when you turn away, you know, in my mind, then you're saying yes to something else, that you're turning your direction to the future, which I think, you know, at the very least, that's what we must do. You know, it's and the high side of, of Saturn and Aquarius the next few years. And to, for those who don't know, Saturn went into Aquarius on March 21st, and it will be in Aquarius only until the 1st of July. It dips back into Capricorn. So to an earlier point you made, like maybe this is going back to things the way they used to, but Saturn goes back into Aquarius at the end of the year. So 
you know, whatever old systems are crumbling, like, I think we still have to create the new ones now, whether it's an external political system or geopolitical system, or it's a system within yeah. meditation, whether it's energy. I had such a great um, talk with a client the other day who said, you know, it's kind of weird, but I'm kind of loving the, um, isolation, you know, quote unquote isolation, because she said that she realized that so much of her life was spent in consuming, 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 and distracting herself from herself. And now she was just like, you know, she had a big job with big responsibilities. And, you know, that meant, you know, the, any kind of free time she had was buying things and, right. you know, like trying to, again, distract from her life. She got her life back. You know, and again, we can't all be that fortunate. You know, we're all in yeah. a different place. You know, there, there's a genuine, you know, tragedy for people um, that are either suffering through grief or suffering through not knowing, you know, where their next paycheck is coming from. Yeah. Um, so those of us that are fortunate enough to actually create something from this, to be in a space of creativity, um, we, that's actually kind of a responsibility because we are the economy. I think we are the new economy. And that was one of the other things with our um, awakening summit was even though we priced it really low so that it could be an easy yes for people, then I also have raised the prices and there's another price increase coming up because, you know, we know it's valuable. I wanted to make sure we all got, you know, something from it that we can take and pay forward right. because again, you know, this whole new economy idea is, is going to take all of us <laughs> to put ourselves toward it. And we're, again, we're fortunate that we don't have to go to some fa factory and then, and you know, wait to see what happens with that. We need to continue to create the new, as we were just saying, like turn toward that new, whatever that Saturn and Aquarius is going to look like. You know, this is the thing, when you learn astrology, even just at the very basic, like what the archetypes are, what the archetypes mean, sometimes it's the very basics that can really help you to get a grasp on, you know, what is happening in the collective. And I just tell people that astrology is a lot of things, but it's a clock. <laughs> and that where are the hands, where are they pointing right now? You've got your Saturn hand on the clock. You've got your Uranus hand on the clock. And you've got Pluto. And these are what I call big time. You know, what's this kind of umbrella of time that we're in? And yes, you know, there's the day-to-day -day and the moon is in this sign or the sun's in this sign. But really knowing where Saturn is pointing in your chart right now, based on where the signs of, of Aquarius and Capricorn are. Um, I wrote an article, um, it's uh, Saturn and Aquarius sign by sign. So when you read for your sun sign or your rising sign, and I'll put this link in the notes, um, you can know exactly what part of your life has the Saturn hand pointing towards it. But yeah, there's like some comfort. And it's, it's for me, it just, it makes it, all this stuff seem less random that you know that there is this great time and we're all sort of working and living through this great time and how we live and express time based I on love how you called it big time because it's, it's so big time. Is time. <laughs> there's like it's like with the rushing nest Russian nesting dolls of time there's the time that we incarnate through our chart there's the beginning and end based on um, you know that first breath and that last breath um, but there's the time for our sun sign, the collective time for all Scorpios or for Capricorn. And then there's like the big time, the time of humanity, the transits of humanity. And that's when you start to get into the work of people like, you know, Richard Tarnas and his, you know, he does these kind of the work around big cycles. But yeah, I love. You and, know, you know, I will say that one of the things I had been, you know, of course, we're all picking up our dusting off our cosmos and psyches and like going to the Saturn Pluto chapters. And, um, and then, and yes, it does talk about the, you know, the shadow side of this collide or, you know, sort of the more challenges of this conjunction with Saturn Pluto, which we're essentially having all year. But then there's also the potential, the human potential, which is having this great alignment of your personal moral authority, personal conviction of what is right and rising to the occasion, even beyond, you know, the lack of resources or the lack of, um, you know, support as we've known them, known it. Um, it actually is something that I, I had been kind of, that's what I was sort of like 
hoping for and, and aiming toward. And, you know, we see it in so many ways. Um, I love how you've stepped up as a leader during this time and shown people, you know, the feminine leadership, like holding um, space for everyone and teaching. And because that's the thing is with astrology, I think in the past it used to have such barriers to entry, but now, um, like, again, I love reading your dailies. I mean, they're like a little... Yeah little snippet of like a lesson to astrology someone could genuinely go from knowing no astrology to having a grasp of learning this language because it is a language you know by continually following just the things that you offer for free and then hopefully taking a, a jump and taking you know a course or something yeah. like that reading a book because um, there is you know there is some having to put some things together but you know once it comes together then you're fluent. And then, you know, it doesn't mean you know everything because even, you know, we are always constantly, hopefully learning. Oh yeah. Um, constantly, constantly learning. Well, my nodes are in Gemini, uh, not Gemini. I'm sorry, oh, yay. No, it's, it's, it's you're going to house nine house, ninth house. My, my nodes are in, um, Oh, the ninth house. Mm -hmm. I have a South node in, um, Pisces and North node in Virgo. So, you know, teaching oh, so and square, serving, <laughs> the nodal square. Nodal square is I was just always part of my path forward and that south node and the third house is just like all right I'm just gonna provide a lot of content but um I think that you know what I you know I thank you for for seeing me and, and the work that I'm doing and you know one of my thoughts when all this sort of started to happen it kind of felt like this like light bulb almost it's like okay it's it's go time like how do I be the best person that this moment requires whether it's holding space, whether it's calming people, whether it's providing nourishment, these kind of very feminine archetypes. Um, I, you know, it's something that I asked myself. So I was doing, um, and I still am doing this, uh, just not today, but I'm doing these daily meditations to teach people how to get centered and grounded and hopefully start to listen to their own voice. But yeah, I, I'm a very um, democratic person when it comes to providing information and, and sharing information because I, I think maybe because I'm self-taught. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, it sounds like you're a little self-taught too. And then maybe you also kind of have more formal education, but I kind of always used to call myself like a feral astrologer because I just sort of raised myself in the woods based on like YouTube videos and books and um, just I think you know, maybe just being the daughter of an engineer, just like taking apart astrology and then putting it back together and like seeing what worked. But I, I, I put things out there because I want people to have, I mean, I hope it's quality content, but like something that really makes them think and gives them like those aha moments and it gives people awakenings. Um, during this time. And you know, I, I it's, it's an honor to to serve in that way and um to give back in that way and and even this conversation is is a way of nourishing and giving back and um i think that a consistent conversation i've been having with clients is that the world needs them right now <laughs> there's no there's no more like hit and snooze um, there's no more putting it off. So the old stories, I'm not good enough. Nobody wants to hear me. Uh, who am I? All the, the different stories that we have, even for me, I'm like, all right, I got to like put my big girl pants on and w whatever my old stories were, they got to go. Cause, um, I can look at my chart and look at the highest potential of my chart and say, okay, my, my life, you know, North node ninth house how do I prevent, present a spiritual vision for people, uh, a moral compass, maybe there's a better way to put that, you know, a sense of conviction, Saturn's the ninth house too, um, you know, and then I got all those Sagittarius planets. So, you know, I'm sure that in your own way, you're feeling the call during this time. And I think you partly did it with the, uh, the awakening summit. Yeah. Um, you know, and you had asked me about like, when was my awakening? And I mean, you know, throughout a life, there's obviously, you know, there's different levels and things like that. But really, I would say the, the moment, if I were to look at when my life, you know, had changed in a moment was, um, well, astrologically, it was my Pluto square, um, which, you know, was like about around, I think I was 41 or something. Or, yeah. No, 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 sorry, 38 or 39. And um, when I actually natally have Pluto 
exactly square my ascendant anyway. So it was like Pluto going on my ascendant. It was, no, Pluto was exact on my ascendant and exactly square my Pluto. Um, I was going to a shamanic initiation, right? Which I thought, oh, this sounds like so cool and like so fun. And it was like a weekend thing. And, you know, we had the shamans from Peru came and we had this, you know, initiation as, as wisdom keepers and, and these womb healings and things. And then the next morning I woke up and I got a call from my father that my mother died like oh suddenly God. overnight, like no warning, nothing. And I was oh, like, I'm so sorry. Oh. And I was, you know, first I was freaked out. I was like, oh my God, did this, did this, you know, shamans do some kind of like spell right. on me? You know, cause I didn't know what to, to think. It was so shattering. Um, but through that, it ended up being such an incredible, obviously a transformation, but a beautiful merging of my spirit and my mother's. I mean, I have Scorpio moon conjunct my North node mm -hmm. and I've seen a lot of people with Scorpio, you know, either Scorpio moon or Scorpio North node that's some kind of, you know, deep, whether it's death or initiatory experience, like completely has the potential to change them. And, you know, at that moment, I remember just constantly hearing, don't look down into the abyss, look up, mm -hmm. look up, keep looking up, you know, because I knew if I like looked down into the abyss, it would just take me to some dark places. That's not to say I didn't grieve, you know, that's not to say that there weren't times where it was a difficult process, but it, throughout, I felt so encouraged by my mother's spirit, you know, to live my life, live the life that, you know, she didn't get a chance to live, mm -hmm. you know, because women for generations and generations and generations have been so disempowered. And even if we think that we are free and we can be whatever we want, there is something in us, you know, in our energetic DNA to the level of breathing and blinking, you know, that tells us that we aren't free, that, that we have to uh, minimize ourselves or we have to, we can only serve the masculine or the patriarchy. So the real awakening, you know, is to awaken to our power, especially as women, um, especially as, you know, the feminine men who want to show that side of themselves. Um, and we have, you know, everything we wish for, you know, the crumbling of the patriarchy is happening. It's like, okay, now, you know, don't wait for like the invitation in the mail. Like this is it. Right. And, um, then like shortly after that, I went through a, you know, a plant medicine ceremony mm -hmm. and, um, and that stuff is like really intense. And I went through like hell and back. And the whole point was, I was asking, what is my purpose? what is my, I was told that's like where you go to like here, you like find out your purpose. Um, I also, it helped me grieve my mother's death mm -hmm. and everything really purge things. And then the final day I said, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And I was shown a big Zodiac wheel, just like the one you see here behind me. It was like big and gloomy. And I'm like, that's it. You mean I went through hell and back and purging like, and and John, yeah. <laughs> and um, but I said there's something in it rung true for me. I mean, I was already doing astrology and people were already responding in a way that it was significant, not just you know, entertainment. Um and for some reason, I just needed that. I needed that, you know, the, the spirit to grab me by the shoulders and say, this is it. You are on the path. You're already on the path. And for so many people, they may already be on the path. They just haven't given themselves that permission. Right. You know, because a lot of times we're looking for some authority figure to say, yes, you're ready, you know, or like, um, and actually it was one of my mentors, Mark Jones, who I studied with him for like three and a half years, who he said, you are no longer a student, you are a teacher. And it, I had to somehow get that, you know, have that told to me for me to fully claim it. And now I do fully claim it. Um, and I have some students and clients that say that they've been studying astrology for decades, but they still don't feel ready yet. But you know what? You are ready. You know, you are ready. And this is the time and the time is now. Yeah. I think it from me, if you need to hear it from me, I said it. <laughs> yes. I, I personally have Saturn and Virgo. So I get the whole, like, it's not perfect enough. It's not the right moment, but that's a trap. 
And there came a moment where my desire to do astrology and to live my purpose and to connect with people and be authentic was greater than my fear. So I just had to like kind of push myself out of the mess and just be like, all right, it's going to be messy. It's going to be messy for a while because I, and, and I had originally come to evolutionary astrology. I wanted to study with Steve Forrest and I guess this is my own karma. I would put the deposit in for the, um, the program and I was so broke at the time, like broke as a joke. And I would have the money for the deposit, but I wouldn't have the money to pay the rest of the tuition plus the plane fare out to California, plus running a car and twice I lost my deposit and what? yeah oh my god yeah this was like my kind of this is like a little bit after my Saturn this is 2008 2009 or 2009 2010 and I think the lesson that I can look back because I think I would have probably been a very different astrologer is that I needed to like be my own teacher and one of the things that I talked about in my awakening astrology video on Chiron is that my biggest teachers actually weren't in physical they were in non-physical so I've had mentors and there's a wonderful astrologer here in New York City that I feel like I need to like give her proper due is Eileen McCabe and she was like a mentor for me and she's a, an excellent astrologer. Um, I don't think a lot of people know who she is. Maybe she's just more like a New York astrologer. Um, but um, I had to like find my own voice and I had to kind of like get messy with astrology and get messy with the chart. So I like owe an, a debt in the way to evolutionary astrology. It sort of like showed me the door and showed me how powerful astrology can be. And then I kind of bring in different things that both just working through the clients or working with my spirit guides. You know, you said something um, that like totally reminded me of a conversation I had with my client today. My spirit guides said to me to say to her, they were like, how many signs do you need? And I said to her, like, are you always asking for signs? And she just, like, her eyes get wide. And she's like, yes. And they said, like, how many signs do you need? Because I think that we're sometimes waiting for the moment for, like, the heavens to part and, like, God, Shiva, Buddha, whomever to, like, come down and, like, shake us by the, or whether it's in plant ceremony and be like, what sort of sign do you need? Do you, you know, like, just, just do it. Like, you have to trust yourself. But, like, there's so many, you know, I think that this, like, time this covid it's almost like a like an initiatic cave we've all gone within and we're i mean i've been in isolation like i know like some people have partners some people have families but i've been by myself for five six weeks um you know minus some trips out but i've been like hearing my spirit guides more clearly they've been like maybe it's just my point is that this time means something different to all of us and if it's hearing something we wouldn't normally hear because the din of life is sort of pushed to the side but and i imagine in new york like they you know all the noise is gone like that is like such a noisy city that's part of like just like this constant hum or whatever that you're used to so it's almost like like noise noise. (laughs) it's a no i do i have a i'm fortunate to live in a quieter part of brooklyn and that's Person, like a, a personal choice just because of the type of like I'm very Neptunian I need quiet very 12th house but um it, it has been quiet um I think people have left like left my building um but also but there was a point in, in April in early April where it was legitimately non-stop ambulance sirens and there's like a like a that psychically you can feel that there's a sense of distress within the city but the city does feel energetically because I'm clairaudient and I can like hear people think and like it's almost like all of New York's thinking has like gone down a little bit so there's been a couple of points in my time I've been in New York City for 15 years where like New York got very quiet like one was when um, Bin Laden was killed and the other was like after the election where New York just got like stop thinking and I'm like oh that like psychic chatter isn't there anymore and it's a little bit but like the, the ambulances have gone down a little bit. And I think that we're on the other side of whatever this is, at least for now, my hope. But um, yeah, like sound and hearing and hearing spirit, um, it's a very different experience now when you don't hear your neighbors constant, like nonstop or, you know, whatever the kind of ambient noise of living in a city of eight and a half million people. 
So I think it's amazing too that, you know, even with astrology, it can give us so much and, and we can even get obsessed with putting together, you know, the, the signs and the symbols, but the ultimate answers are going to come from, you know, listening to whether it's your higher self or your guides or your inner knowing, you know, and that combined with the astrology to be the guideposts. I mean, to me, that's really the kind of life that so many more people are waking up to. I mean, this is the thing. We are already awakened. All of us now are awake. Uh, how we deal with that, though, you know, we can see it in so many different people. Some people are, you know, the trauma has led them to denial or to clinging to some, you know, conspiracy theories or whatever it is that makes them feel like, um, you know, even this addiction to fear and this addiction to panic is real, actually. So if we can just come back and say, you know, we have all the tools that we need, you know, as long as we can stay at peace and aware, then, you know, we'll be able to navigate during this time, you know, and we need to take time to heal ourselves um, and to know that there's more levels to unpeel in ourselves, you know, and that the experience is going to continue to show itself to us. Um, but isn't it such a great um, privilege to really get to know ourselves at a deeper level? And it is um, a privilege. Um, I'm <clears throat> very privileged in this moment, and, and I am hopefully have you know the respect for that. Like I, I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones, and hopefully other people who are listening are also lucky and have a moment to use this time to reflect and to find their voice. Beautiful. So I hope people will come away with this um, really with a deeper understanding of what astrology can help them to uncover in themselves and their lives. I think yeah. it ultimately at its core, it is a self knowledge tool. And I, I just want to put a little thing in there for Liz Green, because she did a whole series of seminars on Carl Jung and his red book. And um, he actually was really deep into ancient astrology. He had, he had a whole library of ancient yeah. astrology texts. And she said that, you know, there's this modern idea that ancient astrology was all predictive and it was all about predicting events. She said, actually, no, it started out way back. And I don't, I'm not sure like how far back she's going to, but she said, according to a lot of these ancient texts, it began as a tool for self understanding, you know? So the fact that it's a modern thing to like be self understanding, well, it's no, there is a long history of it. It's just when astrology went into the dark, age you know when it was had to be hidden and it was um nearly credited for so long yeah for like centuries then we, you know we lost the thread um but astrology is an amazing tool it can it can help predict things it can help um uncover things in the collective as well as something very personal in your soul so it's an amazing tool i mean i focus as i know you do is you know the fact that the collective is made up of individuals, you know, and I hear a lot of people saying, talking about collective awakening and, and how we're supposed to help that collective awakening. All we can do is awaken ourselves and cultivate that, you know, yeah. because the collective is made up of individuals. You um, have the courage to do something and the privilege to do something amazing at this time, you know, whether it's to leave a situation that, just doesn't work anymore, then that bravery and that courage is going to ripple outward. It's going to show other people um, what it means to really live in your soul's purpose at this time. Again, it's not easy. And certainly there's very difficult things that are happening right now. And it's, we don't all have that luxury. Um, but my hope is that, yeah, it, you know, astrology is a really powerful tool. And I always tell people the zodiac is the wheel of life. It gives us a way to orient ourselves with the natural flow and order of life. And yeah, there's many different ways you can approach astrology from the kind of the classical, the traditional, the predictive. And I, you know, I, I, you know, I bring predictive work into my work, but um, I, I still want to get into the soul. Like, why are we here? What are we working on? 
So I think that, you know, we, we need astrology more than ever, especially when life turns us upside down and we, we need to know why. And maybe this is just all my, you know, Saturn the ninth talking and all my Sag planets talking. Like, you know, I'm such a, you know, my, how I do astrology is very much driven by the why. It is the and, you why. know, it's interesting how you said, like, you know, when life turns us upside down and if we think of the, you know, the, our zodiac wheel as um, a compass, you know, as a compass. so it's like, okay, we're, we're all discombobulated, but let's like check the compass and see like where we're going. What does uh, evolutionary astrology say about the North node collectively being in cancer right now? Oh God, you know, the North, the nodes, the lunar nodes are so important in evolutionary astrology um, because, you know, when you look at the nodes and obviously there's, they're, they're translated differently say in vedic astrology and some ancient texts and things like that but what i love actually i think one of the reasons why i was drawn to evolutionary astrology and a lot of people too probably was the potential that we hold and the north node and the south node are part are you know very important um indicators of that potential because you know they're not bodies in space they are alignments you know the alignments of you know the moon and the path of the sun and the earth and and it's kind of amazing how whenever they transit and they touch certain yeah. things, they really elevate things i mean and the south node can really help to release now the south node you know in evolutionary astrology you know it is part of us it's part of the collective so there's really no getting away from it yeah um, even though it can bring up material from the past material that maybe need to be released but also you know it's part of our karma that we can actually transmute into something that is higher right so there's nothing malefic about the south node in evolutionary astrology it's simply you know that fertility you know that fertile soil that we can make something from and then the North Node is our potential for collective growth. And this whole transit of, you know, the North Node in Cancer and the South Node in Capricorn have been extreme because of the, you know, the right. Saturn Pluto in right. Capricorn has really made this thing like so um, in our faces and, and so extreme. But what's great about it is the extreme of the North Node in Cancer. I mean, the day that the North Node transited, uh, ingressed into Cancer was the same day all of those women were elected to um, oh, really? positions of power in the House of Representatives in America. Yeah. It happened right then, and it was like, okay, so they're in the house, you know, the women came home, you know, like they say, like a woman is in the house or something, yeah. <laughs> and into positions of power, which we tend to think of, you know, leadership responsibility, a Capricorn thing. So to me, that was a beautiful balance of the feminine cancer and the Capricorn leadership and responsibility. They took over the leadership that needed to be, you know, that leadership vacuum and, um, and the integrity, you know, as well that was missing. And so, you know, as the North Node had moved through cancer, we'd seen, you know, the new, the Me Too movement, women finally coming into a certain, you know, that power of the feminine saying no more to this patriarchal disempowerment, patriarchal abuse, you know, and um, I don't think Capricorn itself is about the patriarchy. I think Pluto and Saturn and Capricorn yeah are the page, you know, are the shadow of the patriarchy. And so we've seen such beautiful, you know, and lately I have seen a lot on the news and several different outlets, people saying that the leaders that are handling the coronavirus situation, the best are all women all through the world. The ones that are really handling it, that are caring for the people, you know, cancer, very a cancerian thing are the women right because it's like this is the thing when you get sick mama is not gonna like get anything in the way of you getting better you know she wants to take care of you right. make sure everything else is like taking care of that is a priority you know at least that like archetypally is the how you know a mother handles like a sick child 
And so we're seeing that, that like all the other nonsense about politics and stuff, a lot of these women leaders are not having it. You know, it's like oftentimes a woman leader kind of has to play that game, right? Because they're in a man's world. But a situation like this, one ultimately has to be about our self and I mean, our health and wellness and safety, which is, should be what government is there for, you know? Um, that actually is being so well done by women. They're really rising to the occasion because the North Node, we see it as, you know, this evolutionary intention. So it, in some ways it feels like we're evolving, you know, maybe in, in some subtle ways and also some not so subtle ways that we're learning to integrate more of the feminine into the, you know, with the Capricorn leadership. So to me, the integration of the two, because Dana Rudyard says, you can't just look at one. I mean, he always thought it was ridiculous that people would only right. like, oh, let's just look at the North Node, which, you know, the North Node does have this pull toward it. But when we can integrate it, you know, because it's a, it's yeah, a, a polarity to integrate, access, then that can really help us to see, you know, the meaning of this transit. Yeah, we're, we're all at home right now, North Node and Cancer. We're baking. I'm trying to perfect my, my bread baking game. Um, but on May 6th, the, tr uh, the real North Node, the true North Node, um, goes into Gemini. Do you have any intuition about what this sort of collective shift is going to be? I think it, the very, you know, one very obvious thing is sort of the online learning kind of thing. Um, more and more of our learning and communication is going to be emphasized. Um, you know, the knowledge seeking. I mean, something that we've even been seeing lately is like, how do our governments work? You know, like we don't even know how things work. And so we have to figure it out. This whole thing, like, you know, this... I don't know if you know Marie Forleo, but her saying everything's right. figure out of everything's right. figure outable. That actually is kind of like what we're gonna have to figure out. Like all these things in our world that take the, the realm of the mind, um, that take like knowing how to live in this new reality, we're going to have to have beginner's mind again. You know, I often think of Sagittarius as you know, the, the wise one, you know, it's like yeah. having the, the wisdom, you know, Sagittarius is wisdom and Gemini is knowledge, but they both have value at this time. And so in order to get that wisdom, it wants to be based in something true that's knowledge based, right? Because if you just have the knowing, you know, the opinion, everybody has an opinion now <laughs> online, right? Um, and, and it's not a matter of just having strong opinions. It's are they based in anything? Are they based in any reality, any knowledge, any facts? I think we're going to have a return of um, basing a lot of our understanding in real knowledge. Now, Neptune is going to be squaring that for several months, actually. Oh, I was boy. like, oh my God, really? <laughs> I was hoping it would just be like a month or something. But um, <clears throat> I think for like the last several months of the year and into 2021, um, which as we know, Neptune can distort things um, when we're seeking this knowledge. So we've had so much, you know, Neptune and Jupiter have been doing their dance, the square and the yeah, and sextile yeah, well, and stuff. Was, sad rising that Jupiter Neptune square. I was just like, I can like, this, I want this to go away. And I'm very Neptune in myself, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm over. I'm done with this. The, the mutability is hard for me. I mean, thank God I've got um, Mars in Gemini. So that kind of helps me to like be able to tango with it. But um, the rest of my chart is like fixed or cardinal. And, um, but we're going to have to get have into to. this mutable energy. You know, we're going to have to find our way to, to move with the changes. I mean, we, you know, these changes we've experienced have been kind of like a, a collective shock, right? But then after yeah. the shock, you know, we're going to have to put together the pieces in whole new ways. Um, and so, and even like, say, it may be a while before we can travel and move freely like we have been in in the past. South node's going to be in Sagittarius. We might not be able to go long distances. For a while. That kills me because I, love I know, I know, I know. I, <laughs> I, I mean, from uh, January eighth until March first, I was in six countries. 
If oh we count okay, I was following you. I followed three of them. I guess I missed some of them. Um, if you count the United States, one, I went to, um, oh God, it's, uh, Turks and Caicos because um, the winters in the Northeast can be brutal and you just need, like, if, if you can get that sunshine, great. It kind of like takes you into, you know, out of winter. Um, and then I, I had a training weekend in Switzerland um, for some oh, yes. energetic work. Oh, yeah, I love Switzerland. And I had a stopover in Portugal, and then I'd go get gas in France, <laughs> like and that's in Switzerland. So it was like six countries. I feel like spirit was like, you get this in because it might be a while um, before you can travel again. So I just think with that north node, we're leaving the homes, but we can only go into the neighborhood. And I always think of the South Node in um, Sagittarius as this, we need our mantra over the next year and a half is like, maybe I'm wrong, you know, because we need to go back to basics and we need to get back to the information of Gemini and get a new perspective with Gemini, especially with that Neptune square. It's like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe everybody's wrong. We just need like to look at this. I think our mental health needs to be a priority too, because the, the shifting nature of reality, you know, and also not knowing what truth is, um, that ultimately we will have to, you know, those times that are very Neptunian, usually they call for you to not rely so much on, you know, your mind, but more like you have to, you have to use your intuition and it has to be clear for you to know, you know, which path to take. So yeah. I called it like the search for the ultimate truth, right? Because, oh, you know, the, the, and it's, and it's not, again, not so much about like how passionate, you know, the Sagittarius can be like very passionate that they know the one way, but to me, see, I have Pluto in the ninth house. So to uh, me, you know, in evolutionary astrology, yeah. I mean, it's a powerful, wherever Pluto is, is like a powerful amplified area of the chart, but the soul also is on a path to the opposite. There needs to be a balance there, which for me says going back to beginner's mind, you right. know, <laughs> like, and any kind of wise person needs to have that flexibility of mind, that openness of mind to ultimately be able to take in more, know that there are things that they don't know. You know, there's, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and so, you know, also I would think it's going to be extremely important for us to vet our sources, you know, our sources of data yes. and knowledge yes. and information. So I heard someone once say that like Gemini is like the newspaper and Sagittarius is like the, what is it? The opinion column or, um, there, yeah, it's ruled by Jupiter. Yeah, it's editorial. Editorial. <laughs> Which in a way it does, you know, and they both have value, but you have to know which one you're taking in. Um, and faith, right? I mean, I think the square with Neptune, they may, there may be a loss of faith and loss of yeah. faith is not easy to just replace, right? right? It's a real soul crisis. And so, but that is a journey because Neptune washes away one dream in order so that a new one can wash ashore. So we have to take that journey to not, you know, they say, if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for anything. And so we want to really be open to some higher truths, but we also have to make sure it's pure. It's coming from a pure place, you know? So there's going to be a lot to uncover with that. Um, with that transit, I think. Yeah, as somebody, um, I have Neptune square the node, so it's a recurrence transit for me. Wow. <laughs> I have Neptune Sagittarius at 17, um, conjunct Mercury, Partile, and it's my nodes are at 24, uh, uh, Virgo, Pisces. So I just realized, you know, ding, recurrence transit for me. Um, I'm like, all right, I know that Neptune square so well, so well. Well, to me, in what you were speaking of earlier of, you know, spirit led you away from any kind of formal training as much as your Virgo says, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. really like wanted young. it. There was something that said, you know what, you need to learn in your own way. And, you know, you're a brilliant astrologer. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, 
that right there is one example of something that we may find that the ways of learning, I mean, I'm finding a lot of my clients and a lot of my um, students and things like that, they're getting more and more savvy, which gets me even more. I used to sort of just kind of speak, you know, very simply and trying to right. too much astrology speak, but now they like want more and more because they're, they're taking it in all. And that's great for, you know, that, that it keeps us on our toes and challenges us that, you know, we are speaking to people that are ready to speak the language with us. Uh, maybe that gives me hope for Saturn and Aquarius that like, it is about the, the best minds in the room. It is about intelligence. It is about like at this point, we need to really go to the experts um, to kind of hear what they have to say. And even though we you know, need to kind of look to the Gemini and get some information, but I think with that Neptune square, it's like, all right, who's, who's got the real information? Who's the expert? Um, and, you know, I will say the one thing that we already see so much in, you know, like online is people say, like, they'll share some article or some YouTube video of some random person saying, well, this is the real truth about, you know, X, Y, Z that goes against everything all the scientists or journalists say. And I'm kind of like, mm, I actually kind of believe in journalistic integrity to a certain degree, <laughs> you know, and science to a certain degree. So some, somebody in their basement saying they know the real truth, you know, I'm me, the triple Capricorn, I'm going to be a little bit doubtful of that. Um, but also, you know, I, I'm also open-minded enough to know that sometimes you do have to slip down the rabbit hole and sometimes there's going to be some truths down there. You just need to make sure you have enough breadcrumbs to make it back the there's, way out. There's ways to feel out truth. There's ways to test like with your body, with, you know, energetically, you have to have to do it in a way where you're, you don't, you're not imprinting um, your own hopes and fears. So in, in a meditation practice, especially the meditation practice that I've taught, you sort of bring yourself up to the level of the crown chakra, this, you know, part above the head. And when you're, if you're truly in that place, you can feel what is real or not. So maybe to kind of speak some Neptune speak and the fact that we're all going to get very cozy with Neptune over the next 18 months is that, you know, how do we learn to feel what's real? Because I think there's been, you know, sort of the trap of Neptune, there's a trap of every, you know, every sign has a trap, but the trap of Neptune and Pisces is that like, there's just been some crazy stuff that's floating around and people like, it's like, okay, well, if you get within, like, is that true? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not, um, but maybe we're, we all need to really kind of work on our uh, psychic and intuitive uh, and spiritual faculties over the next 18 months, but making sure that we clear the channel, clear the clear ourselves as much as possible. Otherwise, it's going to be the distortion of Neptune and not the That's reality. That's a great idea to make that a regular practice. It's interesting because, you know, moving from this earth to air, I've been thinking of you know, that, so all this materialism and this earth-based reality that we know, um, something had said that like, we'd be going through or moving from like, say three meals a day to like meditating three times a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, that seems like um, something, not that we wouldn't Seems eating, like Marty, but, yeah. like, that seems to be more of like a an emphasis you know or it'd be at least as important right so maybe that's something we can bring in i know that we're considering doing a course together soon i think that yeah so i think this is actually a really good uh segue to talk about like your work um you know kind of close out you know anything last remaining i you know where people can find the awakening summit while it's still available um and also this course that we're yeah. hooking up well, um, the Astrology of Awakening is still available. And um, again, on May 1st, I don't know, is this going to come out before? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to like, we're just going to put it out there. Oh, great. Okay. So reason, my Mercury's in Sagittarius. So we're just going to put it out there. I've learned not to, yeah, I've learned to yeah. stop editing and stuff stop too. It's just like, you know what? Let's just do it. <laughs> Maybe that's part of this whole like, you know, Gemini, Sag thing. And um, so the Astrology of Awakening Summit is a package. And, you know, I added up, if I were to just like, you know, if we were to just charge, you know, what, like $30 for a little 
for one of the webinars and then, you know, $20 for some of the PDFs. And then um, I added everything up, including the presenter gifts. And it was like $680 value. I mean, because the presenters, a lot of the presenters, like I know you, Katie, gave a whole other webinar as your yeah. gift, you know, and some All of them did meditation. Webinar. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was amazing. You did like, you know, everything you ever wanted to know about Chiron. We're afraid, <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. And um, which was so generous. Like all of the women were so generous. So once I added it up, I said, okay, this is like really, this is a little under, <laughs> you know, under we are price. underselling ourselves. So Ooh. I am raising the price to something a little more manageable, you know, $97. So right now you can get it for $47 until May 1st. You get um, 12 talks. Yes. You and get you get bonus material just to make plus that Plus bonus clear. material for the, all that. Yeah, like, so, so it's a, you're getting a lot of stuff. Five, I mean, and some presenters gave like two, you know, worksheets, um, you know, guidebooks and things like uh, meditations, guided meditations and things. It's a beautiful package that you can just indulge in, you know, on your own time. Now we did all the live event in one weekend, which was intense. It was, um, you know, and, do it. and it's still alive, you know, it's still available. So I invite you all to check it out. The website has all the information. It's and this is on radiantastrology.com. Well, it's actually, yes, radiantastrology.com. Um, the exact link is bit.ly slash astro awaken. And, um, but you can find me on radiantastrology.com. Um, I also have a podcast, the Radiant Astrology Podcast, um, where I interview some of my favorite astrologers. And um, I just started a new season. So you can find me there. But um, I'm so excited. You know, since about 2013, every eclipse season, I've done an eclipse circle, which usually is, it's from anywhere from like, you know, like, wow, well, like six to eight weeks usually, because what it does is we enc encompass the entire eclipse season. So d if there's two eclipses or three eclipses, you know, yeah. depends on how long it's going to be. And I really like to start at the first eclipse and, you know, we're really exploring this inner alchemy that's happening during the eclipse season. Um, and I was just thinking you can, and I've invited Katie to be one yeah, of our, you know, our teachers and what you were just saying then about your expertise in understanding how to align with truth, how to, how to know yeah. if something's true for you. Um, I'd love that you, if you could make that part of the practice, because I think that really Fantastic. speaks to the shift of the nose that we're going to be into mm -hmm. at the time um, of Gemini Sagittarius. And um, so hopefully we'll get that going in June. And then, um, I don't know, I, I, the, the Eclipse Circle is something, it's been my signature program. I've been doing it myself with some assistance mm -hmm. in the past, um, but now I, I feel like I'm ready to have co-teachers so that we can all share our expertise. And it creates a great container for people to you know, explore and experience. And you know, I've heard a lot from ancient astrologers, some really good ones that say that eclipses, you know, they're, they're malefic and they're bad omens and things like that. I've been doing eclipse circles, like every eclipse circle season, except for the last one, cause it was around Christmas and, yeah. you know, I kind of just wanted to take that one off. It was on my son too. Um, and, but I've been doing them every eclipse season, like for like six years now. And, um, you know, maybe out in the world, right, for the collective, there's there's deep transformation that we may not feel ready for, right? So um, that's how I like to think of it. But I've seen so many women just blossom and flower from these eclipse circles. And and a lot of them, and some of them, you know, years ago, one of them recently was in a, another course of mine online and said, oh my God, that eclipse circle I did with you years ago, I'm still... Like it still touches me to think about how beautiful that was because yeah. we all together and we know that we're in this like cooker, you know, and for some reason we're able to take in more during that time. We're able to shut out the rest of the world and be together and witness one another. And when people come together and we 
really help to uplift one another's hopes and dreams. We help everyone to feel it's okay to let go of the past and it's okay to open to the future. I mean, that's really special. That's like really having like your tribe, what tribes were meant for right. to help you during that time. So that's always been the intention and they've always been beautiful. And I would love for you to join us. Um, the next day. So excited. I mean, that June, uh, eclipse is on my mercury neptune wow. <laughs> mars and sagittarius so i want to give it a, a positive and and I, I you know eclipses can sort of ring the bell in your chart and it can make things happen but i also believe that there are these kind of vortexes of energy so i like be very intentional about how you're going to use this time we got one on the 5th of june we got one on the 21st of june and then on the 5th of july to close out that cancer capricorn series and i call it you know i've been calling the eclipses like the gateway because it really is you are stepping over something so that's really I know, i'm really glad to hear that people have such powerful experiences and, really and the one on the 21st of june especially you know that's the summer solstice yeah and so it'll be right there at zero cancer you know yeah. and it's to me it's this interesting handing off from Cancer to Gemini too, because the North Node will be in Gemini. And this is sort of, you know, these are these last eclipses in, you know, Cancer Capricorn. And so um, it just seems like a really beautiful time for us to experience and celebrate our experience of, you know, the feminine, the Cancer being such a, a leading part of our collective evolution, but yet opening to what is coming next. Yeah, the, the, the new story begins literally North Node and Gemini, um, and we're going to sort of be unfolding the story for the next eight. And maybe writing our own story. They say the story you write of your life is going to be the greatest book you'll ever read. It's a good <laughs> way to end our time together. We certainly had a very rich conversation and enriched sharing and i really wanted to you know who, who's going to be the person to kick off this series this video chat series of you know what you know why do we need astrology at this time in the world and of course like we need it more now more than ever because uh, the world is upside down and we need to kind of sort of reorient ourselves and thank you for being a part of this kind of kickoff and sharing your wisdom with me and your time. Um, I really deeply appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody else who listens and kind of connects to you and connects to your work, they're going to agree. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Katie. Well, you've been listening to Christina Caudio of Radiant Astrology, um, also of the Awakening Summit, which I was a part of. And uh, please do check her out. She is on radiantastrology.com. Um, it's like bit.ly slash awakening. If Astro I'm, Awaken. I'll Astro just have Awaken. it on yeah, radiantastrology.com. <laughs> I'll put all this stuff in the show notes and you'll follow her on Facebook. You can follow her on Instagram. And um do support her work because she does really great stuff. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>